ourselves. We'll sing ourselves warm right now. Our first song will be song number seven, 716, please. Songbooks. Did they know about songbooks? Okay. Songbook 716. Yeah, they're in front of you. They look like this. 716. Sing the, we'll sing the first and third verse of 716, Sing to Me of Heaven. Are you ready? Let's all sing. Sing to me of heaven, sing that song of peace. From the toils that bind me it will bring relief. Burdens will be lifted that are pressing so. Showers of great blessing or my heart will flow. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low till the shadows o'er me rise and swiftly go. When my heart is weary, when the day is long, sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, sing that dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Let you guys know it. That's good. Next song will be song number 991. Are you up? 991. This is my father's word. Sing the one, two, and three, all three verses. 991. Again, let's all sing. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings, and around me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world. <clears throat> I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hands the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world, the birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, Declare their Maker's praise. This is my Father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear Him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems all so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied. In earth and heaven one. Amen. Go caroling in the afternoon in the cold weather. <clears throat> and that's a little bit of what you get. You'll, you guys all know that, that's for sure. Before we have our scripture reading and opening prayer, we'll go back into seven. 731, please. 731. Also, all three verses. Take time to be holy. 
Following this song, we'll have our scripture reading and opening for 7.30. Again, let's all sing. Take time to be holy, speak off with thy Lord, abide in him always, and feed on his word, make friends of God's children, help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing His blessings to seek. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. Uh, abiding in Jesus like him thou shalt be thy friends in thy conduct his likeness shall see take time to be holy be calm in thy soul each thought and each motive beneath his control thus led by his spirit to fountains of love thou soon shall be fitted for service above Scripture reading comes from Matthew, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it will give light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. go to God in prayer, please. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you so very much for this opportunity to be here tonight. We thank you, Father, for all that you give us. We thank you for all that you do for us. And we thank you for blessing us, which is what we're talking about. We know that you are God. We know that you are a living God. We know that your Son came here and walked the earth. He told us what you would have us to know. And we have that word still today. And we'll have that word with us till the end. Thank you for him, and thank you for the word which is him. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for our homes, our jobs. We thank you for the warm place to come here and worship you. We thank you, Father, because you provide for us, and we thank you, Father, for your kindness and your grace. And we thank you most importantly for your son, Jesus. For with him, we have the hope of heaven. And without him, we're lost. Father, we pray that as we go through this service tonight to you, remembering your son, and remembering and hearing your word, and, and knowing that you are the truth, that your word is the truth, rather, and that what we hear tonight, that we can take into our hearts and then out into the world. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We pray, Father, that we'll have attentive ears and listen to what you have to say. As always, we pray in his name, your son, Jesus the Christ. Our next song will be song number 548, please. 548. Sing the first and third verse of Lily of the Valley. 548. Again, let's all sing. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. 
He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith and do His blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Song of the Invitation, close of the lesson, will be song number 939. 939, we'll sing the first and fourth verse of that at the closing. 939 will be the closing, of the invitation song, rather. Song before the lesson will be song number 289, please. 286. 286. First and third verse is convenient. Why don't we stand? First and third verse, wonderful story of love. Let's all sing. Wonderful story of love. Tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love. Awake the immortal strain. Angels with rapture announce it. Showers with one. Sinner, oh, won't you believe it? A wonderful story of love. Wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love. Wonderful story of love. Jesus provides a rest. A wonderful story of love for all the pure and blessed rest in those mansions above us with those who've gone on before us is singing the rapture is for us a wonderful story of love a wonderful a wonderful Wonderful, a wonderful story of love. I knew I was going to be here today and uh, I was really looking forward to tonight being singing night and and then he told me that they had moved singing night to next Sunday night and so if you'll oblige me a little bit I'd like to just lead a song and uh, kind of relates to what uh, I'm going to be talking about tonight and I think it's 1005 did you say yeah 1005 Let's sing the first and third verse of this song. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of rest, for the redeemed, the good, the blessed. 
Yonder in glory when the crown is won. For Jesus is now their star divine. Brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem shine on. Oh beautiful star of Bethlehem shine upon us until the glory dawn oh give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day beautiful star of Bethlehem shine on Amen Amen Well, now it's 12, right? Listen, that, that song never gets old, does it? It might feel a little old now, but, but uh, in a few days you'll be ready to go with it again. <laughs> Our text is tonight from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. We want to look a little bit more closely at those verses. We're still talking tonight about the light of the world the beautiful star of Bethlehem he's the light of the world and I really think it's a good time to talk about Jesus as light of the world especially when radio stations are playing a country singers version of silent night and a rock singers take on joy to the world you know I kind of shudder to think what might happen in our culture if all references to Jesus were taken away at Christmas time. There's no telling over the years how many people have had their hearts nudged at this time of year. Maybe because of this cultural exposure to the story of Jesus, even with some of the inaccuracies that come with it. What a beautiful metaphor this is. Light of the world. Because light isn't just the fastest known form of energy in the universe, but it represents so many other things. Light symbolizes hope in the darkest hour, discovery in the shroud of mystery. We call the acquisition of knowledge enlightenment. I have been enlightened. Light symbolizes good that overcomes the darkness of evil. The word glory in scripture is when something shines brightly as in the glory of God and to say that Jesus is the light of the world is to realize hope in him in discovery of truth and a new knowledge being enlightened good that overcomes evil and glory that shines into the hearts of men and women Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness we believe that tell me. Jesus is the light of the world. We believe that he's the light of Rainsville, Alabama. We believe he's the light of the Central Church of Christ. He's my light. He's your light who lights up our lives. Do you believe that? Maybe you believe it. It's a little bit more difficult to trust it. If he's your light, where do you take him? Where do you take Jesus in this world of darkness? You know, if you're you're walking down a dark alley or you're trying to find something in the darkest room of your house, do you usually try to do that without a light? If the power goes out in the middle of the night, what do you reach for first? So if Jesus is the light of your world, you take him where? Take him everywhere you go. And you take him how often? Only on Sundays or every minute of every day. We believe he's the light, but maybe we don't necessarily take him everywhere or all the time because that's that's a lifetime process of learning to trust him everywhere and all the time. To walk by faith not by sight, which is really counterintuitive to us. To receive his word as a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. To realize the truth. His light is a 
illuminate for me, even when there's a truth there that I don't necessarily like, but then learning that when we finally accept the truth, it sets us free. So here we are tonight, again, talking about Jesus as the light of the world. But then Jesus wants us to do one more than that, one better than that. Jesus says, I am the light of the world, and he is. And we talked about the ways he is the light this morning. And no doubt there are many other ways we could talk about that. But, but that's not the whole quote. The quote is actually from John chapter 9 and verse 5, where Jesus says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I wonder why he says, while I, while I am in the world. Certainly Jesus knew that his time on earth was short. He knew the cross was coming. He had foretold to his disciples not only of his death, but also of his resurrection. The scripture indicates that Jesus knew his resurrection would lead to his ascension and that he would no longer be in the world. So he says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. What about after? After he left the world. Isn't he still the light? Yes, he is. But he also had an idea about this, or a concept about this, that blows my mind. And it blows my mind like when Jesus, when, when 5,000 hungry people were looking to Jesus, and then he turns to his disciples and he says, you feed them. Or it blows my mind when he told, like when he told the rich young ruler, go and sell all you have and give to the poor and then come and follow me. Or when he said to his disciples, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move, and it will move, and nothing shall be impossible for you. The mind-blowing idea is found right here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, where Jesus says, You are the light of the world. You're as obvious as a city on a mountainside. You're an oil lamp, and you don't put a lamp under a basket. No, it goes on a lampstand, and everyone in the room can see so shine when others are looking. They need to see the good you're doing. It's how they'll see the brilliance of your Father, though He's in heaven. You understand what Jesus is proposing here? He says, while I am in the world, I am the light. But then He left. And His instruction for afterward, after He would leave us, was, You are the light. You are light. Who is the light? That, that you in the original Greek is plural, so it's y'all are the light. This was before the cross, of course, and, and he said it originally to the Jews, but there's no mistaking what Jesus ultimately had in mind by this idea, that one day he'd go to the cross and be buried and then rise up victoriously from the grave and, the, and then, at that point, he would turn this fantastic message over to his followers and call on them to be the light that lights the way to him. And so, this idea is for us. It's for you. It's for y'all in Rainsville, Alabama. Us folks gathered here in this building at this very moment. You are the light. You're the light of the world, Jesus says. And notice that this. He doesn't say you should be the light. You ought to be the light. He doesn't say you need to work hard on being the light. No, Jesus says you are the light of the world. In other words, this is who you are. So it's not a matter of only believing Jesus is the light, but believing that he set us up, those of us who are in him, called the church to be the light in this world. And, and it's not that we set this goal or that we work for it, trying to figure out how to be the light, 
we don't have to figure it out because he's already got it worked out. It's not about trying to be the light. It's about believing you are the light. Believe this about yourself. Believe this about us. You are the light. We are the light. Let these words of Jesus into your heart. Let Him identify who you are because He's the only one who knows who you really are and what He intends for you to be. Now, what I have trouble with is believing this about me. How can I be light, the light of the world? I think about light. Light is pure, and I'm not so pure. Light is dependable. It's there every time. Well, I'm not always dependable. Light is what God is. God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. First John 1, verse 5. And I can't even begin to compare to that. So, I think that, and I think that I'm not the only one who thinks that way. We tell ourselves, I think, and Satan's prompt, that we're not up for this. Light of the world? I, I don't want to be that because I'm not that. A, a, a symbol of righteousness? Well, that's way over my head. Person of goodness, well, I'm not always good. No darkness within, well, there are those skeletons in my closet. That's what Satan wants us to believe that we're no light, that we're not enough, that God better send somebody else for the job. Here's the truth if the church isn't what Jesus intends for it to be, if we aren't what Jesus intends for us to be, it isn't because we're not pure enough or dependable enough or enough like God. If we aren't what G Jesus intends for us to be, it's because we don't believe that we are who Jesus says we are. Let that thought sink in. What we believe about ourselves is more significant about ourselves is more significant than how we act because what we believe about ourselves affects how we act. And what Jesus says, not what Satan says, is what we should believe about ourselves. And Jesus says, without apology, you are the light. You are the city on the hillside, the mountainside. You are the oil lamp sitting on a lampstand in the living room of the house. Jesus says, let me tell you who you are. Because you're that. So think about it like this. Don't try to be light. It's not possible. Instead, focus on the truth. The simple truth that because Jesus is in you and you are in him, you don't have to tell the city built on the mountainside to try and get noticed. Oil lamps don't have to think, if oil lamps were inclined to think, about how they're going to light up the room. The city will be seen. The oil lamp will light up the room. So believe that you are the light. You don't have to try to be seen. You'll be seen. You don't have to figure out brightness level. Just shine. Be what God intended for you to be. Jesus only mentions one thing you have to do as light. Did you notice it in the text? He says, they need to see the good you're doing. Your good works. And if you're in Him, you're doing good. Maybe you don't think you are, but you are. So keep doing good things. Now notice that Jesus didn't say here, do important things. 
do great things, do superior things, he said do good things. What kind of things? An act of kindness, an act of compassion, an act of service. Even a cup of cold water, Jesus says in another place. If you're in him and believe he's in you, you're going to do good things and people will notice. And they'll say, that's what God looks like. When you're thinking, how can I help? How can I serve? How can I be a friend? People are getting a glimpse of the glory of God, even though he's in heaven. They see his brilliance through you. Now, there's a scary part of this. What if I mess up? I'd rather not be the light of the world. I don't want to be a city on a hill. Sand Mountain's good enough for me. I don't want to be the one to light up the room. Because if I mess up, everybody knows. We all know what happens when you stick your neck in it. I get that fear, and I feel it often. I think about Peter and the other disciples on the night before the cross. They had finally gotten the courage to stick their necks out for Jesus, or at least they said they would. You remember what they said, Lord, we're ready to die for you. You're all going to fail tonight. And what happened? It happened exactly like Jesus said. They failed. They fell short. They didn't look like the light of the world that night. So what if you mess up? Well, you will. You'll fall. Just as Jesus caught his disciples. Yes, they fled that night. But later on we know that they went on to spread the message to the world. I tend to think that maybe the failure of the disciples was part of the plan. Before they were arguing with each other over who among them was greatest. Well, after their fall, you hear no more of that. After Jesus caught them, the only one they talked about as being the greatest is Jesus. When you fall, he picks you up. You may have to do something really hard, like admit your failure. being the light of the world was an our idea. It was his. Through Christ Jesus. So, right now, Jesus is telling you who you really are. You are the light of the world. You are part of God's plan to bring those in darkness to Him. Let Him shine through you. This is your purpose as God's masterpiece. This is Understand this is our purpose statement. I think really humanity's purpose statement is to be lying to the world. But understand how that fits in with the concept of Jesus is the light of the world. You know, the, the Son is called back in the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, this is the Son of the sky is called the greater light. And the moon is called the lesser light. What we know about the sun is that it produces its own light. The moon does not. The, the, the sun shines on the moon, and then the moon reflects the sun's light onto the earth so that we you know how the full moon lights up the night sky. Jesus is the light like the sun. He himself is the source of the light. He produces his own light. We are like the moon. We 
don't produce our own light, but we reflect the sun, S-O-N. We reflect the sun's light into our world. We're the lesser light, but light nonetheless. Let the light of the world, Jesus, into your life by putting your trust in Him, by declaring Him as your Lord, by being baptized into Him, that He might shine. Not tonight will thou oh, be saved. Oh, then why not tonight? Our blessed Lord refuses none who would to him their souls unite. Believe, obey, the work is done. Oh, be saved. Oh, Tonight, oh, why <coughs> not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? Oh, will thou oh, be saved? Oh, then why not tonight? Thank you, Brad. The Lord's table has been prepared for those that did not have the opportunity to partake of it this morning. We're going to sing the first verse of song number 350. If you have a need to partake of the Lord's Supper, please come down here and you'll be served. <laughs> 